Hi, I'm Cliff Curry. I'm the superintendent of Red Bluff Elementary. I have an important message for our families and our staff and the community at large. We just finished up with a board meeting earlier in which uh, the decision was made to move to distance learning for our startup and our reopening uh, this August. And I wanted to review that decision with you so that you understand what's going on so that you can be reassured about the safety and continued academic progress of your children and so that we can move forward together and uh, make the best out of a difficult situation caused by a global pandemic. So one of the things that we offered uh, last spring when we ended school was that we would offer distance learning to any families that were interested in it. And when the numbers for distance learning were very low, we were able to fill those positions with staff without having holes in our in-person program. And of course, as we move forward through July, uh, planning on uh, every student every day. In the last week, the numbers of parents requesting distance learning and of families requesting that for their children have skyrocketed. We're, as of today, upwards of 400 families that are interested in distance learning. We have 64% of our parents that report not wanting to send their students back for, when, with full loading in classrooms. We're trying to be responsive to parent needs, but we came up against a larger issue, and that issue has to do with our labor and our funding. When a staff member moves to distance learning, it leaves their classroom unoccupied back at the site. Now, because some students are now taking distance learning, there are fewer classes that we need but it's not one-to-one. -one. In other words, when a teacher moves to distance learning, it doesn't mean that that classroom need is gone. And so what we found was with the numbers of people requesting distance learning, that we did not have the staffing in order to provide in-person instruction. We would have had anywhere from 10 to 15 positions or classrooms that we did not have teachers for. So because of that, we had to make the decision to move our program to distance learning. Now, it was a difficult decision. We're aware of the difficulty and it was our intent to open with every student every day. Uh, some of the other schools, uh, in particular the high schools around us, have uh, an ability because they're on periods and we're in self-contained classrooms, they can do distance learning different than we can. They were able to accommodate both programs. We have been unable to, and we're not alone. There's districts north and south of us in Tehama County in the elementary levels that are having and doing the exact same thing. So I want to stress this is not a decision based on it's not safe to go back to school with students. This is a decision strictly based on our labor pool and our ability to pay for an increased labor force. The state did not fund us for an increase in personnel and staffing, unfortunately. Uh, this is something that we would have hoped to have, have happen at the state level, but being that we're in a budget crisis at this point, the idea that we can increase staffing at a time like this is financially irresponsible. We simply cannot do it, and we don't have the money to cover those losses. So that's our primary reason. One of the things that happened as a result of tonight's board meeting was uh, the agreement uh, forged with the uh, the, the teachers of our district to uh, extend the start date of school from next Wednesday the 12th to the 17th of August. That is our new official start date. So those three days next week that formerly would have been instructional days, the 12th, the 13th, and the 14th are now professional days. Teachers will be in, staff will be in, students will start on the 17th. I have to stress that we are moving to a distance learning model. So you will be contacted by teachers, your teacher soon for more details about the daily schedule. You will be contacted about collecting uh, Chromebooks. You will be looking at the new requirements that the state has given us for distance learning because what you need to know is that this is not the crisis learning we saw after the last shutdown. In the Budget Act, the state enacted some requirements for schools to follow that are mandated by the state. Some of those include daily live interaction. That's a requirement. Every student must be contacted uh, every day by teachers uh, through online instruction or phone checkups. Those must happen. 
Um, we are going to be taking student attendance. That means that we have to have participation during the day in the instructional period during the schedule that we publish. Uh, there's a number of other things, but we also will be checking families' connectivity and taking weekly engagement records and having a plan for what to do if students are not uh, engaging in the curriculum. What we're hoping we can do is have parent and student meetings so that teachers can get to meet their students before launching into this. You will be contacted for schedules along that line uh, when we can get them together. Uh, it should be in the coming week. None of this is being done lightly. We've been worried about this decision because we know that it is going to put parents and families uh, in some hardship. Um, we are trying to be responsive to the vast numbers and the majority of our parents who were not comfortable coming back with 100% loading and who were requesting distance learning. But the, but the reason that we have to move to distance learning has to do with a lack of funding to increase staffing. And I want to make that clear. We don't believe it is unsafe for students to return in person. We simply do not have the funding to make that happen. It's very important here in the next week, uh, if you need to reach out, we have an ARIES uh, parent portal now for registration, for updating your phone and your email. It's going to be essential that we have a working phone number and or email for you so that we can communicate. That is going to be something we need to have. If you have a change in that and cannot figure out the parent portal that's available through our websites, please call your local sites, your local schools, talk to the office about how to get access or to update your contact information with them. That's going to be essential. We will be checking in at the trimester to determine if we're going to continue with distance learning. At that point, we will assess how many parents are still interested in distance learning to find out whether or not those numbers have shrunk, whether they've increased, or whether they've stayed the same. That will allow us to make some plans for staffing and for determining how many staff we may or may not need at that point for both in-person and distance learning. Uh, I should also mention that uh, as per a very recent government uh, mandate, all sports have been canceled. We are very aware about how difficult this will be. We are committed to making it as easy as possible for you and we will be providing you with all the clarity that we can to answer your questions to make sure that you understand the procedures and the protocols moving forward so that you can assist and make sure that your students stay engaged with school, which will be happening through that distance learning model. So please know that all the support we can offer you, we will during this time, and together we hope and believe that we can make it through it. Thank you.